Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's March 30th. These are your headlines. First up, we're hearing about the herring runs on the Cape loading up with herring, which is exciting bass on both ends of the run. Also hearing about exceptional pan fishing across the region. And tog season, spring tog season opens up on April 1st across all of southern New England. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So before we begin, we've got a couple of news items to throw you away, and the first one concerns the sprig tog season. Um, it opens up in Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut this Saturday, that's April 1st. And there are some subtle differences between the regulations, so it's smart to kind of definitely want to check those out. I'm going to run through them all for you here just so I can keep you well informed. I feel like that's part of my job. Uh, so. The good thing is Massachusetts and Rhode Island are almost aligned. So Massachusetts and Rhode Island both have a minimum size of 16 inches, as do all states. Uh, they also have a uh, bag limit of three fish, and they have the same trophy slot. So you, you can keep three fish, 16 inches or greater, but only one of them can be 21 inches or greater. The only difference between Mass and Rhode Island is that in Rhode Island there's also a 10 fish per vessel uh, limit. So that's something that you definitely want to keep in mind, especially if you're fishing in one of those places where you might fish Mass and Rhode Island waters. Um, you're going to want to keep that in mind, especially if you're coming back to uh, a Rhode Island uh, boat ramp. Then when we cross over into Connecticut, things change quite a bit. Um, first and foremost, the duration of the season uh, is much shorter. So in Mass and Rhode Island, the season goes all the way to the end of May, that's May 31st, but in Connecticut it ends on April 30th. It's also a two fish limit in Connecticut with a 16 inch minimum and there's no trophy slot so you can keep whatever size fish you like. Uh, one little tidbit of good news in that realm is that New York's uh, Long Island Sound regulations are the same as Connecticut so you can sort of fish freely within Long Island Sound and not have to worry about where you are because no matter where you are you're going to be following the regulations. Uh, one other place you might have to look out is if you like launch out of Westerly and go over toward like the Thames River, maybe fish Sarah's Ledge or something like that. Um, you're going to have to fish on Connecticut regulations. So just keep that in mind. And um, as long as you do that, you'll be abiding by the laws and uh, you'll be getting in on some early tog fishing. The other thing, of course, is the giveaway, which is ongoing. We've got a few more um, entries this week. Still kind of a trickle. I haven't seen a lot of uh, photos recently, but um, it's still a long way to go. We're going to wrap this one up on May 17th. Going to give away a mini darter. I finally finalized the design, and um, I think that's going to be a cool uh, thing to give away to somebody. We're also going to do some Yuzuri products for the second place uh, prize winner. So if you guys aren't familiar with how this whole thing works, as I'm sure you are by now, I'm just going to run through it real quickly. Um, Basically, it needs to be a recently caught fish, and it's got to show you holding the fish. It can't be laying on the ground next to your rod or your boot or something like that. And you got to send it to me at danderson at thefisherman.com or text it to the number on the screen. And basically, this is a composition contest. So you want to take cool photos, maybe a release shot, um, maybe you know something with a beautiful sunset in the background or something like that. Um, because basically, you're just trying to impress me. It's it's my favorite photos that I get uh, through each contest period. Um, again, this one's going to wrap up on May 17th, so that feels like it's a long way away, but it's, you know, it's coming. And, um, you know, we'll pick a winner then and uh, probably start another one after that. So get those photos into me and uh, we'll see who wins. Heading up into Massachusetts now, we typically would start off with James Jukes, but he's under the weather, said his throat's hurting him so bad he couldn't even think about speaking on camera. But he did text me over some details about what's been going on in his region. And so basically up there on the North Shore and heading down toward Boston, the largemouth bass fishing has been very good this week. He said Saturday was a particularly good day. Uh, a lot of guys doing well on things like jerk baits and jigs and Ned rigs. 
uh, thing, you know, sort of the finesse smaller bait game has been working really well up there. Uh, also, the carp fishing has really started to come to life on the Merrimack River, so that's something that's got a lot of anglers excited as well. Um, and he was hearing about some good holdover striped bass fishing in the Boston area, and in that same region, sort of really covering that whole area, uh, the trout fishing has really picked up over the last week, and that's because the uh, stocking trucks sort of made their way that way over the last week or so. Um, they were really hitting, like, Plymouth, Seekonk, and then out to the Cape hard, but now they're starting to migrate up up north and further inland, so the trout fishing uh, is really starting to spread out and guys are really taking advantage of that. Uh, things that I've heard from that same region, kind of getting down closer to Boston, I've heard some good holdover striped bass fishing as well in the Boston area. And of course that trout fishing is picking up um, and is going to be picking up it's, you know, it's going to continue to be good throughout this entire month and well into May. So right now is a really hot time to get out in Massachusetts for trout. Heading down toward the Cape, as we mentioned in the intro, we're seeing a lot more herring moving into the runs now. And it's not just those like major runs like the Elks Run of Wareham that always has early fish. Um, it looks like you know, a very large percentage of the runs on the Cape, even some of the lesser runs, are now starting to see some runs of fish, which is getting bass species from both ends of the run excited. So you've got holdover striped bass which is starting to kind of sniff around the runs and then you've got the largemouth bass up in the ponds where these herring are going to be spawning uh, that are really peaked up and are uh, fired up. They're, they're getting them, they're, it's putting them in a position to be targeted by guys that like to throw big swim baits. Um, for a little bit more on the herring and some of the things that are going on out on the Cape, let's toss it over now to the guys from Goose Hummock Shop. Hey people! The herring are here. We're stoked. You better be stoked. Because it means the fish are going to start biting real good. Buy some big dirt baits and swim baits. Go into the local ponds that all have these herring runs. Have a good time. Gotta love these jumping jerseys. Look at these little guys. Rolling around. Ready to get eat. Bye. Now if that isn't an emphatic welcome back to the herring, I don't know what is. Um, but, you know, the, what they're saying is gospel. It's absolutely true. The, uh, the largemouth bass fishing is going to be rapidly coming to its peak right now. Before these fish spawn, they're going to be trying to take down some high-calorie meals, and there's nothing better for them than a herring. Um, and if you get one of these ponds, like we were saying last week, that's also stocked with trout, man, that's like, that's like the perfect storm, especially for a big bait guy. Uh, and we've seen some big fish come out of uh, Massachusetts waters over the last week or so, even though on the whole the largemouth bass fishing has taken a little bit of a step back just because we've, got, we've had some colder weather, some rain, and uh, some colder nights, which has slowed them down a little bit. But we got a nice fish uh, pick from Mike Dixon again, and uh, got a fish that was just over six from my buddy Mike Lucini here. And there were a few other nice fish taken in mass as well. So the... Uh, the largemouth bass fishing, particularly in the Cape region, is just lit right now. And uh, it's definitely something that should not be ignored by anyone who enjoys that kind of fishing. To wrap things up in Massachusetts, we're going to head inland now and get a little rundown of what's going on out in the western part of the state from Roy Leva. Hey Dave, Roy Leva here with this week's Western Mass Report. Um, fishing's been good. Uh, you know, weather's been nice. Uh, we've gotten a lot of rain, so as you can see behind me, everything's kind of flooded right now. I'm fishing some flooded timber. Uh, there's yellow perch everywhere here spawning. I mean, they're just in massive schools uh, working around the shallows and dropping their eggs and such. Uh, it started a few days ago. Uh, I've been giving them a little bit of time before I started fishing for them. And then today's kind of been a little slow on the slow side. I was trying for pike earlier. Um, so I figured I'd give these guys a try and some nice yellow perch and, you know, in here and I uh, actually spooked a couple of decent sized fish. I don't know if they were carp or not. So I kind of went back and grabbed another rod to see if I can uh, try my luck at something a little bit bigger. But trout stocking continues out here in Western Mass. Uh, believe it or not, I don't even know if there's still people on the ice, but until a few days ago, there was out in the Berkshires uh, and some of the hill towns still have plenty of snow and ice, but you know, trucks are rolling. Weather's nice, I uh, had an eagle perched above me earlier. He was kind of watching these yellow perch as well. So spring is coming alive. I mean, just about anything you want to fish for out here in Western Mass, uh, you can have at it right now. It's, it's getting there, only getting better day by day. All right, catch you guys next week, later.
moving over into Rhode Island, um, we are about, about nine days away from opening day. So the state has been stocking like crazy, all 75 or so lakes and ponds and rivers that they stock. They always do a phenomenal job, and if history is any kind of an indicator, we'll have an awesome opening day next Saturday. That's April 8th. Um, but there are guys fishing some of these other ponds that don't have the white sign, you know, looking for largemouth bass. And the bite over this past week hasn't been quite as good uh, as it was the seven days prior to that. Uh, but for a little bit more on that and a few other fisheries that are going on on the eastern side of Rhode Island, let's toss it over now to TJ Kopecki. Thanks, Dave. Hey, guys. Nice to be back again. Uh, got a quick report for you from the East Bay area, southeastern Mass. Um, the bass bite around here has kind of slowed down. Um, and I've talked to a couple of uh, angler friends of mine who've been like really much pounding the waters around here uh, looking for some bass. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because uh, we had a couple of cold fronts, got warm, it's uh, back and forth weather. Um, but uh, the bass bite and some of the local ponds around here where I live um, it slowed down just a little bit. I'm um, not saying there's no bass to catch, but uh, it was just a little slower for what they were using as their presentation. Uh, they were just slow rolling uh, worms, uh, jigs, uh, ned rigs, still a little bit slow. Um, so hopefully things pick up again uh, next upcoming weeks. Um, trout in Swansea, it's been actually pretty good uh, despite the weather. Um, guys using spinners, trout bait, uh, trout magnets, all working uh, in the Lewinbrook Pond. That's behind the junior high school in Swansea. Um, it's a stock pond. Um, they've been doing really well there. Uh, so if you're in this area and you're watching the video, uh, that's a good place to go. There's a lot of spots. Actually, when I showed up, there was a lot of people there and uh, my spots that I usually fish were consumed. Uh, so it just goes to show you that the bite's been pretty good. Um, uh, Rhode Island, uh, right here in the East Bay, uh, Warren Bristol Barrington, a couple uh, Tividen, a couple of stock ponds. Uh, Rhode Island's gearing up for its trout opener. And uh, well, I talked to uh, Manny over at Lucky Bait, and uh, he's got everything uh, that you would probably need for trout fishing, including he helps you with your licenses if you need a license. Uh, anywhere from trout bait, spinners, uh, if you need uh, some new line on your rod. Um, while you're real, uh, they can take care of that for you. Um, they just have everything in stock uh, for opening day. Uh, and right now they're open uh, Monday through Saturday, nine to five and Sunday, nine to three. Uh, the hours might change on the week of uh, opening day. So you might just check their website and they might update that for you. Um, I guess the, the biggest thing in our area, and I know you, you probably saw it in last week's report was uh, Jeff Sullivan, who was a good friend of mine, and uh, we fished together. Uh, we've been on this perch bite uh, in the East Bay ponds that has been like by far the best I've seen in a long time. And we have a friendly little competition going on uh, to see like how many different lures or jigs or worms, soft plastics that we could throw out there to get them to bite. And right now, I'm up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and he's got about eight uh, himself. Anywhere ranging from size from two to four inches uh, is what I've been using. But mainly, uh, what I've been using on just a, a 3 16 lead head is this uh, gulp. Um, it's the gulp minnow, and you can get it in a bunch of different colors. They have black shad, emerald shiner. Uh, watermelon. Um, this is the four inch. That also, I've been getting them on that. But what I'm finding is when I'm using this four inch, I'm getting a lot of short strikes. So I switched over to the three inch. Um, and I was like, as soon as the, as soon as you cast it in and they're hitting it on the sink, it, it doesn't even give them a chance like to get to like, if I'm trying to catch a bass, uh, there's no chance for it because the perch are just sucking it up. Uh, another bait that's been working well is this storm shed. And this is a three inch storm shad. Um, let me try and get it here on the video for you. And that's in, it's like an off white pearl color. Uh, I've been using these culprit minnows on a 3 16 lead head, that works. And then uh, when when I'm not getting bites on things, I you gotta switch it up. You gotta go smaller, bigger. I'll just go to this little small pink 
Uh, let's see if you can get it here. Yeah. I'll switch over to this. That'll get me a couple of fish. Um, I'm also getting them on the, uh, the Rapala. And this is a suspending Rapala. Uh, because those fish are kind of suspended more towards the bottom where that mud is warm uh, to stay warm. So believe it or not, I actually would just want to try whatever I had in my box. And I was trying a pompano jig that I had. Uh, and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to try this. And lo and behold, I'm catching fish on this thing. And I didn't tip it with anything. I was just throwing it out there like this. And uh, lastly, I, you know, been using these spinners, uh, which I use for trout. And uh, I've been catching them on that. So Jeff uh, is, is probably got a bunch of stuff too that he's not even telling me about, but I know he's he straightened out a couple of hooks on uh, some of his lures. Uh, he's just using the Ron Z's, um, Z-Man's. Uh, I'm sure he's using a couple of other uh, uh, jerk baits suspending too uh, to catch them. But uh, all in all, um, th things have been well and uh, I hope uh, the upcoming week is better. Um, I'm going to be going to Florida on April 1st, and I will be reporting from there um, next week's video. Um, I'm going to be headed to the Tampa area. I know it's been some tough fishing there uh, just because of red tide and stuff, but uh, I'm going to give it a go. I'm on vacation, but uh, I'm still going to have a report for you, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Tight lines. So as I started to say before we threw it over to TJ, and as TJ sort of echoed in his report, Largemouth bass fishing took a little bit of a step back, and that's really region-wide, but particularly in Rhode Island, just because I've been hearing that from multiple people and fish from Rhode Island waters myself this week and found the results to be not quite what they were in the week prior. Uh, what I noticed, water temperature's gone down. Uh, probably only a few degrees, depending on the size of the water body where you're fishing, but even just a couple degrees, especially at this time of the year, can make a big difference. And uh, you're going to want to go back to some of these more finesse uh, applications. Maybe not going to throw your big baits right away unless, until we get a few more nice days like this and the water warms up again. Um, so, you know, throwing a suspending jerk bait and just making the pause a little bit longer. Typically you might be doing three to five seconds. Now you might want to do like six to ten seconds. And I know that feels like an eternity, but it doesn't feel like an eternity anymore when you get that hit. Um, so that's one way you can do it. Also, fishing things like jigs and ned rigs and fishing them very, very slowly. Just really trying to finesse those fish when that water temperature drops a little bit they just get a little bit tougher to fool um, but that's the way that I find works best for me especially with the jerk bait just a longer pause on the jerk bait tends to be the thing that turns them on for me for more than 20 years anglers everywhere have come to know one thing that nothing says no to fish bites so another thing that we're gonna see getting a lot more attention over the, in the coming weeks in Rhode Island is the spring tog fishing. And historically, if you ask me, uh, Rhode Island has the best spring tog fishing that we see in New England. Um, so there could be any number of reasons for this, but if I had to guess, I would say it's because there is just so much deep water that's within close proximity to 10 feet of water. So you I mean, it, you know, from like Narragansett to Jamestown over to Newport, you know, any number of spots where like 80, 100, 100 plus feet of water are within a half mile of 10 feet of water. So, you know, you could just, it could just be as simple as the migration from deep water to shallow water just being a lot shorter. And so we see a lot more fish moving inshore more quickly in that region than we do other places. Again, that's just a guess. But, um, and that also isn't to say that I think it's going to fire up right on Saturday. I don't. Um, I think it's going to take a week or two before things really start to come together. But historically, Rhode Island's the best place to go if you want to catch a spring tug. And, uh, and if I really had to focus it down, I'd say right in that region I said, from Narragansett to Jamestown over to Newport, uh, that's where I would go if I was trying to get it done. Um, and that's the story that I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. Moving over into Connecticut, we also have the tog opener. but history has also shown that Connecticut tends to be a late bloomer. Um, might be the fact that, they, that they're up in the sound, uh, hard to say why it is, but usually we don't see good tog fishing until the second to last or even the last week or even the last few days some years of the month of April. So instead of going out for tog right now, if it were me and I was dying to get on some, you know, saltwater fish, saltwater bottom fishing, I would go for winter flounder, believe it or not. 
Now I know winter flounder stocks are a shadow of what they once were, but we have some places in Connecticut that still produce good catches. Um, and I know it's only a two fish limit, but it's old school. It's cool to do something old school like that. Uh, so places like Bluff Point or some of the other areas outside of the mouth of the Thames River or over in Niantic Bay or way out west in like Brantford Harbor or Norwalk Harbor or uh, Milford Harbor, all these places, you're gonna look for mud flats, you're gonna look for channel edges, and you're gonna wanna chum really heavily. Um, if there's one thing I learned from the late Jason Jaddick over at Bobby J's Bait and Tackle in Milford, it's that if you wanna catch, uh, well, really many species, but if you wanna catch winter flounder, you gotta chum. And um, so again, hit these channel edges, chum heavily, you can fish with clams or you can fish with uh, sandworms. I think most people would say that worms are a better choice. And, um, you know, they're, they're great table fare, and uh, it's an old school throwback fishery that anyone can participate in, so that's one option you have in Connecticut. Uh, most people right now are concentrating on trout because the state, you know, again, this, this, uh, the state does a phenomenal job stocking, first of all, and they've been stocking like crazy again this week. But also, you know, the fact that they brought on this, um, or they instated as law, this um, catch and release season, instead of just making it sort of a COVID emergency season like it was for the 2020 and 2021, um, it's really just opened things up. It's got a lot of anglers participating. It's created a lot of business for the tackle shops. So, you know, I want to kind of give the state of a short round of applause for that one because that was a really good move. And um, we've seen we've seen it showing up in so many different ways from kids getting out fishing, from people just making themselves get out and go fishing in March. It's just been phenomenal. Uh, one place that's been producing very well is the Farmington River. And for a little more on that, let's toss it over now to Derek Kirkpatrick from Connecticut Fish Guides. Hey Dave, I'm um, coming to you today from Upcountry Sport Fishing Fly Shop on the banks of the Farmington River for your uh, river report for this week. Um, currently there still is a little bit of snow and higher elevations here, which is contributing to a bit of a negative temperature spike. We're also getting an influx of water from Massachusetts, so they've doubled the flow out of the West Branch. We went from uh, probably around 600 CFS to a few days ago, and now we're pushing up around tw uh, 12 to 1300 CFS, so um, high cold water. We actually moved towards the negative in water temperature. Uh, we were climbing up to around 45 degrees, and then after the release and the snow melt, now we're around around 41 degrees. So it's going to be a little slow for a little while, um, but it should really kick into gear um, early April and, and heading into mid-April should be fire. So um, right now the vegans are hatching. Those are a blueing olive and they're around a 16 to an 18. We still have some small uh, stones hatching. Those are anywhere from an 18 to a 16. Um, we have the early stones, which can range anywhere from a 14 and some even pushing 12. Um, your Hendrickson nymphs, you can catch migrational drifts on those on sunny days in the mornings. Uh, you'll start to see hydropsyche in the mix. Midges will be hatching. So we're getting a, a bunch of entomology that's, that's active. So it's really important to sane and, and observe what bugs are actively hatching versus what's in the drift. Um, and that's going to help you. With, with your fly uh, assortment and, and the flies that you choose. If you are heading into the fly shop in the morning, obviously pick their brain because they can give you up-to-date information. That's all I have this week, Dave, back to you. Heading out of that region into the Connecticut River, the coves have been producing really good pan fishing this week. We've been seeing good catches of calico bass, white perch, yellow perch, you name it. Um, the pan fishing has been awesome from Hamburg Cove to Chapman Pond to Weathersfield Cove to any number of the smaller coves and, and marinas that I have not mentioned. Uh, just really good pan fishing going on right now. Uh, also seeing really big catches of pickerel in some of these coves as well, especially for guys throwing jerk baits and shiners. So lots of fish to be caught in the Connecticut River, River area right now for a little more on that. Let's toss it over now to Rowan Lytle. Hey everybody, uh, it's definitely pretty much spring now uh, weather-wise, as I said in last week's report. That said, we're still getting some flip-floppy uh, frontal patterns here, and that can throw off the fishing a little bit. Uh, recently I've been fiddling around with uh, suckers and uh, goldfish. 
This is a pretty good time of year to catch some of the smaller Cypriniform fish. Carp are certainly active as well. Uh, look for the warm flats on the north end of different bodies of water. Goldfish are kind of entertaining. They're not everywhere in New England, uh, but if you find a pond that has them, it's usually urban areas uh, where they get released. And uh, they, they'll eat little pl soft plastics and uh, small nymphs if you want to catch them on fly. Uh, they're also a lot of fun for little kids. Uh, corn, bread, things like that work really well for them. Uh, they're an entertaining ornamental fish that you can occasionally catch in the uh, right place. All right, good luck everybody. Heading out from the Connecticut River Valley, heading west, it seems like everyone that heads west in Connecticut right now is heading for the Housatonic River. And the Hoosie, again, this week has not disappointed. We've had some, we've had some rain, we've had some, uh, some decent weather, we've had some crappy weather, and it's really just translated to uh, really good fishing again in the Housatonic River. We've seen some really nice fish taken again this week, fish that look to be touching into that 30-pound range anyway. Uh, for a little more on that and a few other things, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. We had some herring show up this past week, and there's stripers right behind them. We've seen some herring in our local runs. It's getting a little better. As we move into April, we should see more herring show up and more stripers on their tail. There's been bass caught in Nog Harbor and along the beaches now. We do have sandworms in stock, and that's what's really catching most of the bass. Guys up on the Housatonic are using worms, and then of course soft plastics. This is a good type of year to throw SP minnows on shallow water drop-offs, or where you have shallow water meeting fresh rivers dumping into like a brackish you know, river or harbor. That's where you're gonna find most of your herring starting to run up to spawn. Uh, winter flounder opens up April 1st. I'm sure we'll, we have a couple anglers that you know love fishing for them this time of year. I'm sure we'll hear of a couple, usually along the Nauk beaches, pretty shallow, and then in the harbor. Remember clam chum, a lot of people bring corn and clams. And then the freshwater side of things is really good. The state's doing a good job stocking. You know, your usual rivers, Mill River, <clears throat> Nauk River, the Saugatuck, and the Mianus and Greenwich, rooster tails, small Phoebes, cast masters, trout worms, you name it. We got everything in stock. Thanks and good luck. And that's the story that I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully they're going to inspire you to get out there. The largemouth fishing is good. The holdover striped bass fishing is good. There's herring moving into a lot of the runs. There's just a lot of moving parts right now that are firing up the fishing. And um, there's just no reason not to get out there and catch some fish right now. If you do get out there and catch something, take a picture and send it in to get you in the contest. We'll get you in the report, maybe even get you in the magazine. Uh, so please get those in to me. If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend heading over to thefisherman.com and checking out all the things that we have to offer. You'll get a full slate of what we, what we do over there on the website from the regions we cover, which is Delaware all the way up to Maine, to the species we cover, which is pretty much every species you can think of within that range. We do some travel stuff, we do some how-to, we do some lure building, rod building, we, we cover it all. I mean, it's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing, and that 30 bucks gets you 12 issues sent to your house, the paper ones, you know, the old school paper ones, and 26 digital issues sent to your email box during the season from April to mid-November. Again, I mean, it's 30 bucks. How could you do better than spending 30 bucks on that? So, uh, Definitely give us a look over on the website. If you're still not convinced, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. I appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.